This is a room with a secret. In there, two men are mixing a secret recipe. A recipe for what, do you think? A recipe for snuff. Well, I've left the hustle and the bustle of the auction room behind me, and I've come here to Wilson's & Co., one of the last remaining independent snuff manufacturers left in the country. The family-run business here at Sharrow Mills, in the heart of Sheffield, has been producing snuff from a secret recipe which dates back as far as 1737. The original machinery used to grind the tobacco to make snuff still survives. It's left as a testament to a bygone age. Now, although snuff taking isn't as popular as it used to be, one aspect of it still is very popular and extremely collectible, and that's snuff boxes. And to tell us a little bit more about it is a familiar flog it face and a good friend of mine, James Lewis. James, thank you very much for bringing a very small part of your collection, because I know it's massive, isn't it? It is. I think I've got uh, about three to five hundred, four to six hundred altogether, something like that. I'm not sure exactly how many. When did you start to collect snuff boxes? Well, when I was younger, I had a passion for wood, just like you. Mm. And the problem is, when you're uh, a schoolboy or just about to go to university, you've got nowhere to put furniture. If you're going to collect wood, or treen or anything like that, you have to collect things that are small. Mm. And I thought, what better th than snuff boxes? So I had an interest back at, w as a teenager, um, but the, 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 the passion for snuff boxes really came from one of my first ever visits that I made as an auctioneer. I went to see a lady in a little tiny cottage, and halfway through the valuation, I heard this. <laughs> 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 ah. I turned round to see this lady with snuff dribbling down the nostrils all over herself, yeah. and she went, want some, lad. And, and did you? <laughs> and, and, I, and I didn't. I, I didn't. Today I probably would have done. Uh, but back then I was too shy, and I said, oh, no, 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 thank you, and uh, le left her to it. But it sort of started a, a strange sort of fascination. Gosh. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about some of the varieties and, and maybe pick on half a dozen. OK. There are two types, really. You get the pocket snuff, mm -hmm. uh, which always have a very tight-fitting cover for obvious reasons. Uh, and then you have the table snuff. The table snuff is normally bigger um, and sometimes has a, has a loose cover. The, these three at the front here yeah. are all table snuff boxes and thereby uh, one of the most important snuff box makers of the early 18th century, a chap called Jean Aubrusset. He was a son of a Huguenot silversmith um, and he specialised in working in horn and tortoiseshell and he was snuff box maker to Queen Anne. Oh, really? So that certainly is a name to look out yeah. for. Yeah, and Queen Anne herself was a, a snuff taker. Can, can we have a look at one of those? Yeah. And uh, wonderful detail. Oh, little that town really scene. is nice, isn't it? You can hold that up to the light. Yeah. And look at that, you can see right through it. Look at the detail. Great quality. Just as we find today that smoking is a, a really quite a controversial subject, snuff taking in, in itself was controversial throughout the ages. And uh, although Queen Anne was a snuff taker, 100 years earlier, King James, he despised it with a passion. So if you were caught taking snuff in the presence of King James, you would end up in the tower. Really? Yeah, oh, he loathed it. <sighs> Wherever he went, he would have a, uh, messages sent forward, do not take snuff, do not even indicate snuff in the presence of the king. But in its heyday during the 18th century, snuff taking developed into an important social grace. It remained popular well into the 20th century. And it was said you could tell a lot about a man's social status by the way he took his snuff. Open the lid, take a pinch between the finger and thumb, hold it there for a moment so that the warmth of the finger will bring out the bouquet of the, of the snuff so you get the benefit of the, of the flavour and inhale it. <laughs> Close the snuff box. And then, if you like, just a, a little flourish with your coloured handkerchief. I'm not a snuffbox snob. Not, I know a lot of these yep. people say, oh, it's a silver gilt, it's, uh, it's solid gold, it's this, it's that, it's encrusted with rubies. Yep. And to be honest, that, that 
actually leaves me quite cold. You like the tactile items. I do, items, the yeah. Sort of the working man's Absolutely. Box. I've seen a few of those. That's like the poor man's pinch, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Now, you, you generally call these Scottish snuffs. <laughs> and, uh, I was pleased you said that. But I can get away with it, as yeah. I'm, I'm pure 100% Scott, so I can get away with it. Sort of a mean um, pinch. That's exactly what they're called, a mean pinch. And they were made in brass, and they were made in horn and treen. Mm. The idea was that you would close the gap in the centre so that when you take the pinch of snuff, you can't take too much. Yeah. Bit of fun. Very eye-catching. I love the ram's horns. They're brilliant. Mm. Uh, classic um, Scottish yes. uh, ram's horn snuff mulls, they were called. With a lovely silver mount. And yeah. that's quality, isn't it, all the way through? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've got about 30 of those all together. <laughs> um, and they come in different shapes and sizes. Uh, somebody, interesting, somebody, somebody has attached a silver watch chain to that so that they can carry it and put it over their arm. Because that one doubles as uh, a snuff box on the top there, but also the end screws off and you can fill it with whiskey. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> a lot of these are English and continental. Where else in the world were they made? Well, they were made almost everywhere. The interesting thing is that in China, they don't have snuff boxes, they have snuff bottles. Uh, simply because uh, a sign of status in China was to have wonderful, long, decorative fingernails. Of course, if you have massively long fingernails, you can't take snuff from a snuff box. Then you can't so take a box. You, no, you have a little shovel <laughs> and uh, straight up. <laughs> well, now you're talking about that, we're in, we're in the best location possible to, to shoot yeah. this sort of thing. And, and this is obviously ground down tobacco. Do you think we should try some? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were a nosologist. Is that, is that what it's known as? Yeah, a snuff, a snuff taker, taker in the 18th century was known as a nosologist. I don't, I don't fancy trying any of this stuff. Go I think, on. No, 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 no. I think I'll we try should try, yeah? try some fresh stuff when we get outside, because otherwise we'll sneeze our heads We're off. We're antique people. We should be trying the old stuff. God. Go on. <laughs> oh. God, don't rate that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, don't try that at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh.